Okay, folks, uh, welcome to the North Star Mine, which is located in Garden Valley, California. This is an old mine. Uh, goes back back to the early mining days. This is located at the Mother Lode. Everybody's heard of that. Uh, Coloma was the most popular place where gold was first found in California. And so we're going to give you a little tour through the North Star Mine. And uh, here we go. This is inside the mine. You can see the track in the very bottom. This was for the uh, ore cars. Mine goes in over 500 feet. And uh, it's got a lot of uh, debris, mostly mud. Um, from a slough in that occurred during a vertical mining period. There's a picture of me, Reggie Gould, in my mining attire, my red suspenders, and that's all I can say about that. Okay, this shot is as you first go inside the mine. You can see there's debris in front, and that's uh, what has fallen off from the outside of the portal. And uh, I just uh, have it cleaned that out. Uh, um, I took this as I went in about probably 50 feet inside the mine, looking back out through the portal. Just uh, you can see there's water in the mine. The, the track is kind of sitting in the mud, so it's hard to see, but there's 500 feet of track in this mine. Well, I borrowed this picture. Uh, this is an old miner that's um, got a, a drill rig there, and he's got the uh, air and water, water for the cooling, air to drive that uh, bed into the rock, and he's putting a dynamite hole in there. And uh, this mine in its early days uh, did use dynamite uh, to um, blast their way through the, through the rock. Uh, this is Mr. Ed, and uh, he's not the talking mule. He's the uh, guy with the bucket full of uh, mule dung. Somebody's got to haul the stuff out, so take it out a bucket at a time. A lot of trips. And another trip of the mine, you can kind of see the, the, the vein, quartz vein in the bottom there, traveling just above the the bottom of the mine there and uh, there's all kinds of mineral in here um, slate schist and uh, quartz and and the gold is mostly um, uh, in the schist picture on the left is uh, my two granddaughters uh, Caitlin and Kayla Gould and uh, they had to get in there and explore that old mine, so uh, I took a picture of them in there. And uh, the picture on the right, uh, you can see a little better of the track. It's actually a raised track. You can't see it, but there's uh, it's raised about 12 inches from the floor. And the, the trench where the water was supposed to run out is filled with mud right now. Uh, this is a picture of me with my GPA hat on, uh, coming out of the tunnel, a tunnel, and uh, with my, uh, my so-called uh, mining attire. You can see my left uh, uh, knee is a little tattered there. That's why I slipped on a quartz and sliced it open. And I get uh, another picture of the debris, maybe a little better of uh, some of the mineral. That's kind of hard to see in that picture. This was an early picture of the um, added or portal of the North Star Mine, and uh, there was a lot of vegetation growing in front of it, blackberries uh, two feet high, so I cleaned that out to get rid of all that stuff, so that's it. Another picture uh, looking out at, at the portal. And uh, if you look at the wall carefully, you can see there's a lot of mineral on that wall. 
I believe that's Jack, and he's got his metal detector, and he's out uh, snooping around. Unfortunately, the the track is such a large uh, target that it throws off the metal detector, and it's uh, it's just hard to get a signal inside the mine. As you can see, uh, I've declared notice there that I've decided to put myself in charge. So I'm in charge. Well, this is... Um, Looks like Jack detecting there in the weeds. Uh, the weeds kind of took over there at the beginning there until I uh, cleaned them out and sprayed a little bit. Uh, uh, one day I was up above it and I fell into the blackberries with those uh, thorns about half an inch long and uh, really ripped myself to pieces. It was a picture of um, Steve and Joe, two of my mining buddies, and... Uh, they were getting ready to go inside and look around and check out the mine. It's a picture of uh, s some of the gold, uh, what it looks like, and it's a raw state there. This picture is the what they call the whopper out of the 16 to 1 mine. It's up in Allegheny. And... Uh, just It's called spe specimen gold or crystalline gold because it's actually trapped into quartz, and they dip it into um, fluoratic acid and eat away the uh, quartz. That hole in the bottom is where they actually drilled through the thing. Quite an interesting story. And this beautiful thing is 204 ounces, I believe, of crystalline gold. And uh, it was found in a mine um, probably about five, six miles from... Uh, from my mind, uh, and um, it is just beautiful. It's up in the um, um, California um, mining, um, uh, 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 the museum, and it's up there off of 49 in, um, I believe it's Mariposa. It's uh, well worth uh, looking at if you're ever up in that area. It's up in the old fairgrounds. It's just a piece of pure uh, quartz. It's uh, very small crystals. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice specimen. And uh, I believe I took this at, at the museum when I was there uh, looking at the Frico, which is that big uh, gold specimen. And this is Jack. Uh, he's got his metal detector. I'm not sure which one. He had uh, both the mine lab and uh, uh, the whites. And I can't remember which ones they were, but uh, he's at the vertical mine, which is in the same vein as the North Star. It's part of the North Star vein system, but... Uh, this little hole took out uh, over a thousand ounces out of that little hole. Well, Jack has decided to crawl down in the hole, and actually that goes down underneath there about probably another 10 feet and then disappears into the water. The water level is real high there, so he couldn't really get down to the old diggings in there. And Jack has got his uh, detector up in there. It looks like the White's detector, and... Uh, there's there's track you can't see it but there's track going down into the uh, bottom of the hole which didn't make any sense as to because it doesn't seem to go anywhere so I never we never did understand what was happening there and again uh, Jack is uh, to the right of the track tracks are over to the far left and uh, he's uh, he's running into a lot of drill bits that were the bits that go on the end of the drill, and they were all scattered through the tailings in there. That gives you an idea of the material. The uh, hanging wall is slate. You can see big, big layers. They're probably anywhere from two inches, three inches thick, and uh, they're at a, probably a 60 degree angle, and they're hanging uh, over the top, which was very dangerous. I had them uh, removed uh, because it was just too much of a hazard. This is some of the stuff that Jack uh, found in there, 
And uh, they're mostly old nails that uh, held the track on. And I think the one to the very right is a drill bit. Uh, so it's just uh, artifacts. And this is a picture of Roger uh, in his backhoe, and uh, he's uh, trying to dig him out a little footing there to sit on so he can get a better uh, reach in the, to the mine. Uh, Roger's going to work, and he's uh, starting to pull out a lot of that old debris that for years had uh, um, built up that hole. That's why you couldn't really see anything because there was so much... Uh, um, slate that had broken into it and just uh, over the period of time it, it covered it up and Roger's pulling it out and he's dumping the, the debris over to the very left and uh, the good stuff he was picking out and he was uh, swinging over to his uh, uh, right and uh, I was picking through there and I found all kinds of nice uh, um, specimens that uh, Mostly the schist uh, where, the, where the heavy gold was concentrated. You can see he's sitting a lot lower there. He probably dug down about five feet the edge of the hole to, so he could get a nice, uh, get his extender arms out there where he's got a nice platform. And uh, he, he has an extender hole on this device where he can put another 10 foot reach on it, which really uh, helped dig that thing out. Well, you can see as he's digging that thing out, uh, He's He's been in an area that I've never <coughs> seen before because it was always a lot of big rock and shell. So I went to the left. There's a tunnel over there, but to the right, I never, I never have explored that. It's been that way for years. Well, the foreground there, that appears to be a picture of me, and uh, behind me is uh, Jack, and he's got one of his metal detectors out, and... Uh, He's just searching around the area, see if he can detect uh, uh, another vein. This is a picture of Randy with his uh, high-tech machine there, and uh, I'm not sure exactly. It's not really a metal detector. It's um, I th I think it's picking up a, a signal that's transmitted uh, by the government and. Uh, picks it up and he processes it with that laptop that he's carrying around him there and he can see uh, different images. Uh, so I really don't know too much about it. I'm going to have to quiz him more on that machine. Another picture of Jack. It looks like he's excited about something that he's uh, stirred up there. There is a, an awful lot of tailings scattered all over the place so you never know whether you're on the vein or whether you're just uh, uh, there was an old Spanish mine over there at one time, and uh, they scattered piles and piles and piles of debris all over the place. Yeah, it looks like there's a Jack is in there, and Dennis is in there, and I think Joe is in there. And uh, they think you got a hot spot to work in there. Again, this is the Three Amigos there, uh, zeroing in on something there, looking at. This is a picture of Joe, and uh, he's into the nitty-gritty there. He's down sorting rocks and trying to pick out the ones that they got a good hit on. And uh, I was out of reach of the picture there, but I was breaking them up with a hammer there and uh, checking them out. That's another picture of uh, Randy with his uh, high-tech device. Uh, and... Uh, it looked like it was it was better at detecting larger targets and smaller targets, and he was looking to see if there's any other uh, tunnels that run off that one we're working. Well, this is a vertical mine. It's uh, you, you can't see it very good, but uh, this is where uh, Roger was opening the thing up, and uh, he was getting into some uh, interesting looking material down there. Yeah, and the uh, lighting's not real good, but uh, he's he's getting in to look like an old diggings in there, and a lot of uh, old drill heads and stuff are coming out of there. So apparently, uh, 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 some of the guys believe that that mine headed over to the uh, North Star. I don't know if it did or not. We didn't find it, but it's 
what they were thinking. Just another picture uh, where he was digging the thing out, uh, trying to get a better view of what was at the bottom of the shaft. Another picture, uh, looking down in there, and uh, there was a set of tracks to the left going down, just disappeared into the middle of that thing, which we could never figure out as why you would put tracks in a in a hole that seemed to have a bottom on it. Uh, Okay, this is where the mystery starts to unfold. He pulled out the track out of the, that, see that little box at the very bottom? It's a cribbing, and that's a bunch of 8x8s um, uh, or 6x6, six probably 8x8s, eight eight, uh, um, probably old railroad ties, and they're just stacked one top and another, and it's like a vertical tunnel that goes down, and the track went right down the middle of it, and, of course, he had to pull the track. He hooked his device to it, pulled it out, and then started digging the debris out of that hole. And just an earlier picture of uh, when we first started uh, digging that thing out. Another picture when he was um, still clearing out those huge, huge pieces of um, uh, slate. Some of them were um, three, four feet, three inches wide. Uh, they were massive so the uh, uh, backhoe just ripped them right out of there. You can see he's uh, got that extend a hoe as he's going down in the, it's like an elevator. You extend it down into the hole and curl the bucket then bring it back up like an elevator because when you're in a vertical thing you can't really use the main arm. You have to use that extend a hoe. It worked pretty good. Okay now we got a picture of uh, where he got into that uh, looks almost like a, a a shaft going and may have gone into another tunnel but uh, out of this tunnel they took a thousand ounces of uh, gold out of here so part of the mystery may have been when they went down into that i don't have a history unfortunately and the former owner has passed away since then and this is just a little picture showing uh, gold recovery that uh, Jack had actually recovered. And, uh, and it's uh, not from here, but it's, uh, I don't know why I threw that in, just to, just for look-see. Okay, this is hard to imagine what this is, but it's the top view of, a, of an arastra. And that's a full circle. You're, you're, what you're seeing is half an arastra. The other half was carried covered up by um, uh, a house that was built by the former owner and uh, the debris covered up part of the arastra. But this is where they have a, a ditch and they walk a mule around the circle and he's uh, pulling either an iron ball or a big piece of granite. And you put your oar in there and as it drags through there, it crushes it up, you run water through it and at the side of it uh, is... Um, um, a place for a sluice box where you, you uh, recover your gold. Another picture, some of Jack's uh, gold, and uh, they look like they're one ounce nuggets. Okay, there's another picture of Jack. Uh, he's uh, still trying to figure out. He's, he's close because this is where we were digging with the backhoe, so... Uh, Unfortunately, there's a big giant pile of dirt and rock, heavy rocket. So about all I could do was detect it. It was just too massive to move my hand. And Jack is, uh, he's got a target going down in there, but you can only go in so far. I, I pumped it several times, but the water comes up and it's so fast you can't keep it pumped. But uh, uh, apparently he was on a vein. There's a nice quartz vein that runs right about under his feet and heads right over to the to the North Star. Uh, Jack has found the top of the vein and he's picking some of the rock with his hand there to take some samples out to get a better look at it. Now Jack's on the back side of the vein. The vein runs right from left to right through there and uh, he's, uh, he's right on target with that vein's probably in, no more than 12 to 2 feet wide, but it goes very deep into the ground. 
and uh, it has what they call pocket gold, and one of those pockets where I say it was that thousand ounces of gold. And uh, this is a shot showing when a lot of the debris was cleared out of there, and then um, fortunately uh, I took it from a distance so the, the flash doesn't uh, illuminate the bottom of the hole. Uh, not sure. It's a lousy picture. I should have called that out. Sorry about that. Okay, this little beauty give you an idea that's quartz in the very center. Quartz off to the left. And to the right is uh, probably decomposed quartz. It's um, they call it dirty quartz, but in that material, especially the contact zone between the clean quartz and that, is just loaded with gold. And once you break that up there, there's free gold in there. Uh, this is good stuff you get, ever get into it. Uh, just another place where um, where we used to crawl into the hole before we started digging it out. And uh, I, I had a rope in there where you could lower yourself down in because it was probably about 10, 10 foot deep. Uh, so you need a little aid to get out of there. Uh, just another picture of uh, if we cleaned out the hole. This was actually a picture when I crawled down into the hole, the hole to the left. It just kind of disappeared un underneath. Uh, it was following a vein. And uh, I don't know how far the thing went because it went and disappeared into the water. So I never could really um, follow the vein. I could see the vein going up above, but I couldn't see where it disappeared into. And again, this is showing the strata of the rock. Um, uh, you can see the fractures in it are probably from the dynamiting where it fractured and broke into it. And uh, uh, this is probably looks like quartz, if I were to guess. This is the hanging wall. To the right is the slate. And just, I guess it's all slate there. Those big slabs are probably three or four feet across, and uh, it would probably uh, end your uh, career if you were standing up. And so I had to backhoe, uh, rip them all out of there and put them off to the side. This is yours truly. Um, actually, just threw this in for fun. This is uh, a picture of the saber-toothed tiger we found over in Harbor Cave and uh, cool. We went underneath the ground there as a limestone quarry. And in the early days, Dr. Harbor uh, found this uh, saber-toothed tiger and uh, some other prehistoric things. Uh, so this is one of the, the field trips that me and my amigos uh, went to. And this is also part of Harbor Cave. This is a limestone formation. This is deep underground. There was actually an underground lake there with a boat in it. And uh, this is off uh, in one of the chambers. And, uh, very unique. I've never seen this uh, uh, type of for limestone formation before. Look almost like um, a flower. Very, uh, very unusual. And also the Harbor Cave. And this is more like stalactites, stalagmites, where the limestone forms uh, things that look like icicles that hang from the ceiling. And uh, the difference was there's so much mineral in the ground that they had all kinds of colors and. Fortunately, the flash washed out a lot of the color, but uh, uh, with the decent lighting in there, this, these really would have been some beautiful pictures. Okay, this is what was left of the uh, saber-toothed tiger before they um, pull a simulated uh, uh, model around him. And this is his skeletal remains that was actually found uh, in, in the cave uh, uh, back in 1910, I think, is when they discovered it. And this is Mr. Ed. He's he's making another trip there. You know, those mules, uh, when they're underground that way, they, uh, they feed them underground, and they usually just leave them under there because uh, uh, they spend their whole life under there. They have a little place for them to sleep. And, and, uh, but after a while, you got to haul out the, uh, uh, the mule dung. It starts to pile up. Well, this, uh, this kind of ends the uh, tour of the North Star Mine. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you later.